let's take a look at modeling some stairs. So one of the great features of advanced steel is its miscellaneous metals cap capability between stairs and railings. Uh, it has immense powerful tools that will get you to where you need to be. AutoCAD structural detailing, the, the program that this replaced wasn't quite as fluid with the stairs. So I think if, you're, if you've been using AutoCAD structural detailing, you're really going to like what advanced steel brings to the table. So starting the stair command, we're going to choose to go from endpoint to endpoint. We'll use this line that we have in here. And we'll do it based on the middle of the stair. And again, these dialog boxes to start looking familiar. This is kind of how advanced steel works. You get the general idea of what you're trying to model, and then you'll be given a dialog box where you can then fine tune everything. So some of the things that we have to us, maybe we want to look at what kind of stair we're going to, um, what kind of uh, tread we're going to use. So you'll see there's a window here that shows all the different tread shapes that you can choose. Maybe we want to do something like seven. So as you pick seven out of the list, you'll see it highlights it here in your menu. So very easy to kind of keep track of where you're going. Uh, some of the other things we might want to do, maybe we want a typical 11, 7 stair. So I'm going to go and change some of my dimensions. I'm going to go here to tread dimensions. I'm going to go to my uh, front tread width. I'm going to make that one 11 inches. I'm not going to have any of this front lip. I'm going to let everything be part of the back lip. So I'll zero that one out. The back length, this is our, our rise here. So that will be our 7 inch rise. And then to make sure the bend in the back is vertical, we're going to set the bend radius here to 90. And you can see all of this is changing in the background as I'm making these settings changes. So you can keep up, follow along, make sure that what you're changing here is actually what you want to see changing in the model. Uh, some other things we can deal with would be maybe we want to make something unique at the top. Maybe we want to make something unique at the bottom. All of those are features in there. You'll notice I left that dialog box, but that doesn't mean I can't control the stair anymore. This large gray uh, cube around the stair is actually the way to access the joint again, if you will. So double click it. It will open it up just like a connection macro. And then we'll go ahead and change what we want to change. So maybe we want to fix the bottom, step at the bottom, and we want to say, make this the same as the other steps. And now you see the bottom cleans itself up. Maybe the top landing we want to clean up too. So we'll go to the landings tab. We kind of have tabs and sub tabs. Here we want to make sure we're creating both a front and a rear landing. The top landing sub tab. We're going to set the distance of this landing. The length up there at the top is a foot and a half. So we'll set that. We don't want to create the last tread. We want the landing to be there. And then we want to go ahead and maybe give it a cover, maybe some great material. We'll assume this is an industrial design. And we want that length to be the same length as the landing was, so a foot and a half. And we want it to cover the stringer. So I'll zoom in to the top once all these settings are in there, and you see what it made. So you can see here we have grading on top of the top stringer the full length of the landing. So those are the settings, again, you get full control of. Finding these little gray boxes will help you open those and make those adjustments. All right, moving on from stairs, let's take a look at modeling some rails. So rails are another powerful feature within Advanced Steel. They allow you to select objects like I'm doing, start the rail command, and now you can actually determine where do you want the rail to run from and to. So I can say start it midway down that beam and end it at the end of this beam. And Advanced Steel doesn't care that I've picked seven or eight different beams. It's going to run one continuous rail. So this is great when you're looking at the corners and the intersections of different objects. The railing ignores the fact that you have multiple objects and worries about its own uh, parameters and lays itself out based on how you want the corners to look and how you want the endings to look. Uh, some of the settings, just to kind of skim through these for you guys, that you can control. Maybe you want to have your 
Um, in this case, maybe we want to bolt the connection onto this flange, which means we're not going to be able to run it down the middle. We, maybe we need to offset it a little bit. So I'm going to put in an offset, and the minus will help move it outward of the building. Some of the connections, maybe we want to adjust those. Right now, they're set to nothing. Maybe we want to do something with a plate with bolts. And again, these things can be whatever they need to be based on your designs. I just want to give you some overviews on how to use some of these and how easy they really are to follow along with the numbers you see here and how they match the pictures that you're given. So in this case, we have plate with bolts, and we're going to change the size of the plate itself. Maybe we'll make it 8 inches long and how about 3 inches wide. And we'll change the bolts as well, maybe half inch bolts. And the last thing we're going to want is to have um, two bolts. That's going to be here. Instead of four bolts, we'll have two. There we go. All right, and you can see how it's added in the connection plate with the bolts along each of the posts. It's also offset it out towards the edge of the flange for me. The kick plate, the handrails, the posts, they're all part of the same macro and can all be adjusted together. Let's talk about the plate work and the folded transitional metal work. So maybe we were looking at doing from a circle on the top to a circle on the bottom, but you'll notice these are not even lined up if I were to go from above. Uh, Advanced Steel has no problem with that. It can handle making plate works along those contours. So we'll choose conical folded plate. We'll say we're going to use the contour. That'll be this line. We'll say we'll use another contour. That'll be this line. And now it'll ask me how many facets do I want to use. Maybe I want to do something like 30. How thick do I want the plate? Whatever you need it to be. You say OK, and it'll make your plate for you. It is that simple. So I was at a firm that does a lot of power plant design, and they have things they call duct work, but they're really large cylindrical or sometimes square folded metal plates. And there was really no program around that would do that for them easily. I think advanced steel is, is the perfect key for that. 